So I took this trip last year. I quit my job to do it. I wanted to go somewhere, travel. And actually, I wanted to look at my life in Austin from a distance. You know, evaluate. Where should I go next? Should I stay in Austin? I grew up here, lived here two-thirds of my life. What now? And what about my relationships? You know, with my friends, boyfriend, school, job? Anyway, this was an open-ended trip. I allowed myself as much time as I needed. I started in New York City to see my folks. I ended up going in nearly a complete circle around the country. Points included Boston, Florida, New Orleans, Grand Canyon, L.A., Seattle, Chicago, and more. I visited old friends, made new ones, slept on a lot of buses and floors. You have weird dreams when you do that. Or maybe you remember them better. Anyway, I remember this one dream. The dream it was about a house. It was back in Austin. I guess it wasn't my house. Actually, it was about Tamale House. is Tamale House number three. There's Robert Vasquez. He's the head of the Tamale House number three family. He owns it. And this is Mate, his son, serving up snow cones. Yeah, welcome to Tamale House. Mi casa su casa. Come on in and get some good food. There's Raquel. She calls the numbers. She's worked here a while. That's me waiting for my number to be called. It's worth the wait. And there's Robert and the whole gang behind the counter cooking. Part of the Tamale House family is front page news next door. Robert's daughter, Elaine, owns it. Elaine is the one who sees all the Tamale House customers come and go. See, she works the cash register at Tamale House about 90% of the time. And though she seems silent, like she isn't watching, she knows what's up with us. One time I came in with a friend, and uh, it, it was his first time. I was introducing him to Elaine, the, the woman at the cash register. And, and I said, uh, this is Ryan. This is his first time here. Uh, and, and they said hi. And I said, you know, I've been coming here for like four or five, some four years, I think. And Elaine goes, it's been five, Susanna. <laughs> I was like, Elaine knows how long I've been here. That's great. Funny thing, even though Elaine as cashier is the person most Tamale House customers see, kind of the Tamale House ambassador. She somehow managed to remain hidden each time the cameras appeared. Well, almost every time. There she is in the black and white flowered top. There she is. And there's Monty. There she is carrying the table inside. And there she goes. That was Elaine and Monty again. So we've met some of the Tamale House family. Robert, the dad, Elaine and Monty, brother and sister. And speaking of family, there's my brother, John, Austinite, grad student. 
and he's got some things to share. I'm standing now in front of uh, what is to me one of the most interesting features of the Tamale House, and that's this numerical sign behind me. Uh, and I've often wondered about the symbolism behind this sign, but I think maybe this three is, uh, it represents Tamale House number three, because this is the third one. And uh, the other numbers, uh, I really don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe during the course of the documentary, we'll find out a little bit more about the mysterious 5003 sign. I don't know. And speaking of mysterious... Paul's there behind the camera. How's your day been, Paul? Fine. That's good. Paul's my boyfriend. I got the feeling he was happy running the camera when he did, content not being in front of the camera, which is strange because he's really funny and he tells jokes well and he likes a good opportunity to make people laugh. But maybe we'll see him later. So what else gives Tamale House its flavor? The customers. My name is Mark and I'm a librarian. My name is Greg Garcia and uh, I'm a tailor for, uh, for Ace Tailors in, uh, here in Austin. I'm a graduate student in physics at uh, UT. What do I do? Oh, uh, I'm in some bands in town, a couple bands. I work on music. Carrie Sanchez. Uh, I take care of kids, babysit. Uh, my name is Tom King, and I'm a race instructor at Malibu Grand Prix. I, uh, I work for the Earth and Sky radio series. I'm a writer. Actually, it is a pretty cool job. Uh, yeah, it's easy, and it's, uh, it's, it's really not as idiotic as I thought it was going to be. You know, it involves safety is issues, you know, making sure people don't get killed and maimed and so forth on the track. I work at a record store on Guadalupe. I worked there for four years. Sometimes I'm a student, sometimes a village idiot. So the folks behind the counter have definitely noticed the variety of tamale house visitors. We're kind of used to it already, the way they come in here. People come in slips and, I mean, just earrings here and there. And it's just weird. And then people come in with all kinds of clothes. So I we're kind of used to that. We're just, oh, it comes another one. <laughs> yeah, but um, it's just been like that for the longest. People coming in, just normal. They just come in normal, feeling comfortable the way they are. So they don't bother us. It doesn't bother us. That's their lifestyle. That's, that's the way it is going to be. <laughs> Different people coming in, having a good time. You know, it's nothing weird about that. It's an everyday thing here. Yeah. Oh, uh, all kinds of people come through here. I've had people come in here in their Marseille and their Cadillacs, on their bicycles, walking, and all kinds of people come in here. Well, I like to check, I like to look, I like to look at the tattoos here. It's a good tattoo selection here. A bunch of local bands have thanked Tamale House on their record and CD covers. At least one local band, Gallus Mag, wrote a song about Tamale House. And this is it. Perhaps it's a seating capacity of 500, 500, and every now and then these numbers change as the regulations change. The new codes come in from the fire department. Do you know what they mean? Yeah, what do you think? I don't know. I thought it might have had something to do with like call, the number, the call-in numbers or something at one time, but I don't know. What, what does it mean? Maybe five people can work behind the counter at one time. I don't know. Uh, that's, I think, um, well, those used to light up as to, like, I think what order was ready or something like that. Another mystery around Tamale House is about how it got its start. 
How did uh, the beginnings of Tamale House start? There's a lot of myths about it. And, and I don't know if this is true or if it's just apocryphal, but everyone tells me that there was the original Tamale House was down uh, on Congress. And it uh, sold to it sold its building and its land to one of those big bank buildings and got a lot of money for it. And yeah. and uh, was that your father that owned that time? Right, that was my parents. And it was because they held out, um, they made millions of dollars for their little bitty space. Is that true? They didn't give me any. <laughs> the story is, I suppose I've gotten a hundred thousand. Tell you the honest truth, if I got a hundred thousand, I wouldn't be working. I'd be just staying at home or doing something else. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm not sure that cleared things up about the origin, but maybe it explains why there are myths out there. Anyway, Robert's parents did own the first tamale house back in the days when there were more mom-and-pop businesses downtown. Then there was a boom in the 80s and again in the 90s, due in part to the computer industry. Austin went from slacker to slicker, slicker cars, slicker newscasts, slicker restaurants. Rents and home prices increased dramatically. New office buildings sprouted up downtown, kind of like that. Well, not exactly. Anyway, the first tamale house was overtaken by downtown office development, and Austin continued to grow. In fact, by the mid-90s, Austin was the second fastest growing city in the U.S. You know, there's a lot of ways in that the city has changed. This used to be a nice place to ride your bike, and now it's a big, slutty, go-go town like Houston and Dallas and all of those. Well, how long have you lived in Austin? I was born in Austin. There's not too many people nowadays. Do you meet many people that are born in Austin? Not a few. Not, not that many. Not that Why many, but a few. Your it's becoming more like North Texas. I feel like uh, North Texas is encroaching, you know, further and further south, all of the big hairstyles and undershirts and excessive use of perfumery. What kind of changes have you seen in Austin? Oh, it's just gotten big and like a big city. It used to be a comfortable, more comfortable town, but it's still, it's still a good city to live in, but it's, it's definitely gotten a lot bigger. Austin right now is really being run over by chains and franchises like Starbucks and Bagel Brothers or whatever, Brugger's Bagel Buns. Traffic's a lot worse. And it's, you know, it's really getting to a point where it's uh, out of control, you know. It's nice to come to a small place like this. Tamale House it has a variety of uh, people that come here. And it's, it sort of represents what Austin is, or what Austin used to be before the uh, big national magazines named Austin the top 10 best place to live or whatever. It sort of represents the undiscovered Austin for me, the funky Austin. Uh, you know, I think that the, the old Austin survives in droops and drabs. It's no longer a c contiguous hall, but, you know, it's little places like this. Right, that's a, absolutely true. Yeah, it's it's a throwback type place for sure. Like when I think about Austin and I think about the things that I really like here that are uh, unique to Austin, one of them is Tamale House. I guess what grabs me is you see all sorts of people. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, the hairs, all different kinds of hairs. <laughs> Colored hair, blue hair, black hair, right hair. <laughs> but everybody just, um, just, everybody's so nice and they just fit in. And when you walk in here and you see uh, the guy who can hardly afford the 60 cent taco, um, and then the woman in the Mercedes, um, and then everyone in between. It's pretty, you feel pretty comfortable coming here. So when I was on that trip around the country, I got to thinking about that. You know, like you said, comfort. What's comfortable? What about a place makes it feel like home? Family? Culture? Friends? Social scene? Um, what's really cool about it is that the fam it's family run and the same people have been working back there for five years or longer, you know, and you come in, you see the same people. It's really nice. Uh, I don't know. It's sort of, um, sort of a funky weekend scene, you know, if you want to see who's been sleeping with who, you know, you head on over to the Tamale House, check out the couple scene. So it's not a good place to go if you don't want to be seen, you know. And oh yeah, comfort food. 
There's the food that people gather for. Here's a menu. Breakfast tacos, 65 cents. They have burrito pie, migas, chalupas, lots to pick from. There's really nothing that uh, brings us all together quite like the love of the 65 cent taco. I think it's just because most of the people I know don't really uh, have a lot of food at home and this place is, is cheap and the portions are huge and you can fill up really easily. Kids from the university, they need the cheapest ones you can get, you know, food, you know. They're going to come and get it, you know, so that's, that's good. Touring bands come in and they always come here and they tell their friends. It's in magazines and stuff. It's in a... It's been mentioned in a bunch of underground publications as the place to go in Austin. I'm glad that they come, all different kids from all over, you know, that's why they come over here, because, yeah. you know, at the university I have them from all over the United States, you know, kids that come from all over. The word has spread across the nation, you know. Yes, the word has spread. And some of the people professing the Tamale House word are former Austinites. In fact, you know on that trip I took when I was in Portland, I visited my friends Patty and Brian, Mickey and Derek. They used to live in Austin, Tamale House regulars, and they were still all reminiscing, telling stories about the place. Okay, so there's this place in Austin called Tamale House. You get the Frito salad in the box for like 85 cents, I think it is, and... It's kind of like a, a neighborhood place where everyone, like, everyone that lives in, in the, the North uh, Austin neighborhood goes there in the mornings, shows up with their hangovers, because they close it at 2. Everybody goes there to to recuperate. You know? The warm, nourishing yeah. food. A healing spa? Mm -hmm. A healing spa for the wretched and hungover. <laughs> it's, like you, there's, it's like having five really efficient mothers there cooking your favorite food. Five or ten, I don't know. There should be a shrine right at the front door, and you must make an offering before you can enter. Mm -hmm. So there's many times you find yourself, God damn it. It's two. It's too late to go to Tamale House. It's three. Sorry. It's, yeah. I know it's earlier than it should be. Um, <laughs> I do think Tamale House number three is like the, the center of, of Austin's culinary universe. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's true. It is true. Mm -hmm. Speaking of culinary, with a name like Tamale House, you might expect the tamales to be selling, like, hot cakes. But funny thing, I didn't notice any tamales on the menu. No, I've never tried to get a tamale. It's crossed my mind at different times. Like, it's called Tamale House. I've never seen a tamale here. That's what I, that's what I told my husband. I said, it's called Tamale House. And they don't have, I'm surprised they don't have no tamales. <laughs> I actually have never had a tamale here. And I overheard some people saying that you can't even get tamale here. So maybe it's, maybe that's part of the attraction. Or maybe another mystery. But back to the name, Tamale House Number 3. That number three part implies a relationship to other tamale houses. Everybody asks about the relationship between the Tamale House Number 1 and Number 3. Yeah, we're all same family, it's different flavors, different food, prepared differently. Yeah. So they each have a different taste. And what, what's the story with Tamale House Number 2? Number 2 is on uh, 29th and Waterloo. That's my aunt's. Um, there's practically in between the two of us in, in recipe and flavor. It's not as spicy or it's not as not as uh, cheesy or something like that. It's it's known as just more typical Mexican food. You know, people in South Austin swear that Tamale House in number two or whatever it is, the one in South Austin is the only one to go to. Really? Yeah. Have they ever been here? I mean, what's... I don't know if they have or not. I don't think so. Nobody swears that the one over on the Guadalupe is the one to go to, though. I don't think we can talk about that. I won't talk about I'm afraid it. I'm going to get you. I've had many fine tacos at, at all tamale houses around town. This one is the best. Number three. Okay, I'm through now. I'm hamming it up. So that was Paul, my boyfriend. He finally did volunteer to talk on camera, joking about the different restaurants. The three tamale houses are owned by members of the same family. 
got me thinking about differences within a group or within a community, boundaries, differences, sometimes problems. I guess sometimes it takes effort to get along, to maintain the balance in a group. I've seen a lot of people working back there. Yeah, there's a lot of us back there. It's usually about 10 or 11 of us. And sometimes I think we need a couple of more girls because we get very swamped sometimes. It just gets terrible, but it's all right. It's all right. We all get along all the times and laughing and giggling. A lot of customers come in and say, yeah, yeah I sure do get along for a bunch of girls hanging around each other and stuff. I go, yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> You're just not here sometimes when it's the bad time, but it's okay. Yeah, it's a real small space oh, to it have is. To yeah, it is. It is, but we all try to scoot around each other and stuff. Scooting around each other, one way to get along, maintain harmony. And then there are boundaries and rules, like signs that say, don't do this or don't do that. So Tamale House's neighbor to the south is first prize meat market. There are no boundaries between their parking lots, although there is an imaginary boundary, which Robert calls the Mason-Dixon line. Since their parking lots spill over into each other, well, sometimes that causes frictions. On the other side of the Tamale House complex is Tina's hair design. There doesn't seem to be any tension or strife between Tamale House and Tina's, but that doesn't mean their hair salon is strife-free. Apparently, I got my first haircut there. When I was six months old, my great uncle owned the place. He was a barber. Obviously, he did haircuts. Yeah, I got my haircut there. And, uh, but apparently, like, some years later, <clears throat> my uh, aunt and uncle split up. My <clears throat> She came back after they split up and killed him, shot him dead right there. Tina's hair salon back there. Yeah. Shot him dead. You have a... Yeah, well, you know, that's the way it is. <laughs> These are pictures of me and my parents, by the way my mother and me at Tamale House. And here's me and my dad. I think we look kind of tense in these pictures. Right now, they live on the other side of the Mason-Dixon line in New York City. She's an English professor and he's a librarian. We all used to live here in Austin when me and my brother were kids. We took these pictures at Tamale House a couple years back when they came down to visit. And I have some theories about what it might mean. To me, it seems vaguely satanic, but I, the people here are very nice, and I, I know they would they'd never put up such a satanic sign, but... Um, I can't see them right now, but I have seen them before. I don't know what they mean. They, uh, they're definitely... They're from another time. I don't know. Five is kind of a devilish number. Yeah, actually, I've never noticed them before, but... Uh... And uh, each of these two numbers pointing up, the zero pointing up towards heaven, another zero pointing down towards hell, perhaps representing the e equilibrium between the two realms, the heavenly and the, and the hellish. Um, maybe there's some sort of distinction because there's other tamale houses around Austin that maybe it's somehow, it distinguishes this tamale house and gives it a rating. It's a two star and a two triangle tamale house. I'm here at the Tamale House counter, and one of the things I want to show you about the Tamale House counter is that uh, on, the, on the counter here, there's, somebody took a picture and gave it to them and they put it on the counter. Uh, they took a picture from a plane flying over, one of the passengers' planes, and they must have been on the 
the window seat, and they. And I've seen this this view too, kind of flying into Austin from wherever. You know, you look out the window and you're like, okay, there's that landmark, there's that landmark, and here comes Tamale House. And you can see Tamale House from the plane because, of course, as we know, it's right under the flight path. And somebody took a picture, put it here on the counter, and it says, you are here. It's got a little arrow. Tamale House from above. So I was talking about traveling and funky dreams and that trip last year wandering around the country. So that trip, plus the picture on the counter, got me thinking about the Wizard of Oz. When Dorothy wakes up after her journey, everyone standing there was in her dream, except they were all a little different in her dream. You know, Uncle Hank was the scarecrow or whatever. But seeing things from a different angle gave her a new perspective after she came back. So, like that picture on the counter, Tamale House and Austin from above, you are here, there's no place like home. <laughs> it's the address. I just realized that when I was looking at it. It's the address. The address? Huh. I guess... Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the address. It's the, it's the address. The address board. Hi, this is Tamale House. 5003 Airport Boulevard. There's the, uh, the train tracks over there. What's that? I'm sorry, what? Oh, it's, it's, it's the address. <laughs> I guess that's possible. 5003 Airport. But I think it's definitely a two-star tamale house. The fi it's, the fi it's the 5000 block of airport, so... All right. Yay. Well, I thought five star was the highest. Well, it's, I'm sorry, it's two star, two triangle. I mean, it's pretty high rating, I think. Oh, it's the, ad it's the address. It's the address of the Tamale House. Well, yes, 5003 Airport Boulevard. Yes, well, another mystery solved. Tamale House. Bob Crane, Bob Crane, please explain who's to blame for your death in the 70s. Bob Crane, Bob Crane, please explain how they found your remains yet botched the case hero you're my hero always never near never had a fear never had a care in the face of the germans hero you're my hero stayed out of trouble always had a tunnel running on the double in the name of the good guy having sex with the same woman simultaneously. Bob Crane, Bob Crane, please explain why they found your brain on your friend's car. Hero, you're my hero. Always the veneer, never had a fear, never had a care in the face of the Germans. Hero, you're my hero. 
out of trouble, always had a ton of warning on the double in the name of the good guy. Bob Crane, Bob Crane, please explain why he bet off your fame, then strangled you.